Hey y'all, it's my birthday. It's my birthday, girl. Ah, it's my birthday. <laughs> Welcome to my two talk, um, where we discuss life, faith, and being different. Um, I want to thank everybody who wished me a happy birthday. Five two five, y'all. I just turned thirty one. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory. You see that? Maybe the melanin is just gonna be like ska. <laughs> Um, but yeah, 31. Wow. Life hits you fast. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. And I'm not done celebrating yet. So make sure you follow me on all the socials to get some BTS and stuff and whatnot. Also, I want to thank everybody who went to watch my two talk from last week from Ho to Wholesome. I know it was a little juicy. Um, honestly, if you know me, then I don't sugarcoat nothing. And I have no shame in how much God has done for me. And I think in order to do that and in order to really reach people, you got to keep it a thousand. Like, you don't have to let them know everything. But I think sometimes we want to, like, embellish how bad it was now that we're moving to the other side or come. no. No, that's the problem. That's why our generation has such a hard time being committed to God because they don't really know the realness and the authenticity of everything he's done in our in the generation before life. So I feel like if I can help you just by telling my story, if I can just like plant a seed for you, because like, baby, don't make, I didn't make the mistakes for you. You don't got to experience it. You don't got to know for yourself. I'm telling you. So it's just, it's just one of those things that's like, yeah, the de the enemy not going to shut me up. And he's not going to put me in a corner to make me feel like, oh, you don't want them to think think that about you. I was <laughs> still working on my mouth. I don't give two dams. <laughs> Damn was better than what I was going to say. About what somebody else got to think about a past life of mine. Barely what they got to say right now, but for sure a past life. Baby, if I care more about that than I care about what God is doing, yeah, no, yeah, no. So just know that it's just from a, a very true and loving place that I'm like, y'all, yeah, God is amazing. It don't have nothing to do with me. It don't have nothing to do with like what I what I think that y'all think. None of that. God is amazing. Period. Sorry it took a minute for us to get here. Now today, I want to talk about the hard, beautiful truths about being a Christian. Yeah? Yeah. Now in recent events, especially with like live, living in Portugal for right now and being rededicated to Christ and like, you know, I pull up for my birthday looking real wholesome and look, looking real like scum, you know, because you have a shame throwing a Christian canoe like that. <laughs> but anyway, um, I have realized like a lot of people are like, oh, I just love seeing your ascension. Oh, this is so great. All the while, I'm at home like, oh, Lord, Lord, help me, please. Like, y'all, tell me one heel. To, to tell me one heel that you've seen that going up the hill is easy. Or that is like butterflies and rose petals the whole time. That's what this walk with Christ kind of feels like. It's it's like going up a hill. It is ascension. But anybody that knows ascension is not that easy. You know what I'm saying? Without the grace of God. And so with me celebrating my birthday, um, really last year and this year, I can tell that just my taste for for how i celebrate is changing like what used to be oh let's we going club after club after club to another club and another and we're doing this and we're going to a set and we're going to a pregame we're going to baby first of all auntie don't even roll like that <laughs> no. auntie be like let's do it in daytime because by the time 10 11 happen i'm like who we still out what are we doing i want to be comfy I want to be comfy. I want to be at home. But even besides that, like I expressed in my two talk last week that when I get drunk, 
you know, lust just feels like it got an open door and then it goes straight to my coochie. Like, and I just, I can't be having that. So I pulled back on drinking. So now it's like, okay, it's like going out and you see that like what you used to consider fun is really just y'all being under the influence. You can make it fun with, with people, but it's like, what's the, what's the substance behind this fun? You know, and I can see that that's changing. Lately, what I really enjoy is adventures. I love jumping off things. It's almost like being a child again, you know? Like, I want to run. I want to laugh till my stomach hurt. I want to I want to do things that feel fulfilling. Um, and then also, like, I usually always, um, like, do something giving back. Like, I'm going to feed the homeless or the less fortunate. I'm going to clothe them. Like, I get my friends together so that we can just do something. And that's fun to me. Like, have having my gang together to serve like, I would have never thought, but y'all, I really, like, love that. Like, this year, <laughs> first, God told me not to cut my hair no more. Like, right before I left the States. And I was like, okay, okay, um, yeah, okay. Uh, and I kind of questioned, like, the why, but that's after, of course, I said, yeah, and I was like, all right, well, that's what we're doing because I never want God to feel like I'm so tied into something else. Like I've made this thing my identity. So I'm like, all right, cool. Like if you could just help me redefine how I see myself, because at first my verbiage for even growing my hair was like, I don't want to go through that ugly phase. Girl, why would you ever say that about yourself? You is cute even on your worst day, period. But that's really it. Like, and I feel like my hair would hear me say things like that and just not flourish in the way that it should. Like I'm trying to teach it to curl, but it naturally waves. So when it's not even an inch, there's nothing to, <laughs> it's not gonna do that. Is it, it waves or it's straight. So I was like, okay, well just help me redefine, you know? And thankfully, because of that, that choice of being like, I'm going to be obedient to God and we're just going to get creative. Still eight. You feel me? Because what? When you cute, you cute, bro. Like when It is by the grace of God that I have a confidence that's like a look ain't going to make or break me. An opinion ain't going to make or break me. And I, a, a booking ain't going to make or break me. <laughs> like we're solid. We're solid in Christ. And that just makes us solid across the board. Like, I don't care if I got to be an ambassador for turbans. Baby, the turban be turban. You know what I'm saying? Like, we still, we still working with something. Like, we not, we not, we, we lack nothing. We lack no good thing. So that was one. So I was like, all right, let me redo the look. But then when it came down to just like planning things for my birthday, I just was like, we need other things. We need other things. We got to redefine. Part of number one is not all the time do you change things because you feel like you have to. At some point, your palate just changed. Like God just really transforms you on the inside out. And because our relationship grow has, has been growing, that I just consider him in all things. It, does that make sense? Like I consider what is this... Case in point, say you go out with your mans, right? I don't know why my accent just changed, but anyway. Say you go out with your mans and you get lit. Like you lit lit. You falling over. You know what I'm saying? You open, you got dressed on, but you don't really care. Like you just, you outside, right? And of course your man loves you unconditionally. So he like pulls it together and da da da. But when y'all go home and it's like the next day and he's like, you want to talk about last night? You know, you want to, was there a reason why? And then you start to understand that the questioning is not necessarily because of embarrassment or questioning is more so, are you, are you aware that when we go out there, we're a reflection of each other? Does that make sense? Like you represent me as I represent you. And in no way, 
did that make sense? And that's how I feel. Like when I go out or when I do certain things, even with working, it's like, am I aware of the of the representation of Christ that I have? And so it just it just kind of I love God so much that I just don't want to. You know, I don't want to bark at the lady about customer service. Now, I will. Now, I'm saved, but I ain't soft. So, we can handle this professionally. But I don't want to. Like, I'm not going to disrespect you. I'm not going to, like, throw stuff off the counter. And, you know what I'm saying? I'm throwing stuff at people. Like, <laughs> no. We're not doing that. It's like, it's a standard. And so, yeah. The, your taste just changes because it's like we don't roll like that. The etiquette behind what we got going on is grace, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. The fruits of the spirit. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Hard truth number two is your life is not your own. Literally. I'm going to keep it a thousand with y'all. Walking this journey, you sometimes have, they say pride is the sneakiest sin, right? And so it kind of like, if you are not aware, it'll sneak into your heart. And even walking a Christian life, you'll start to feel like, a little like I'm better because I have this relationship with God or because God speaks to me or because um, God is opening doors and stuff like that. But when you understand that your life is not your own and every day you have to die to your flesh because it is that wicked. It is that sinful that even something that's supposed to be holy, you'll start to have pride and arrogance in, and God don't move in that. The Bible says that God hates pride. Like, I'm but telling you, in Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar, I think that's how you say it, King Neb, he, said, he uh, had a dream. Daniel ended up interpreting it, but pretty much uh, when he got to his highest point, God had already reveal that he would ha like reveal that this is what's going to happen and even after he learned that that was what the dream and he still ended up doing what was what was in it but anyway as he's uh like standing over his kingdom he's like look at all that i've built look at all the great things that i've done and before he could get th uh, the whole sentence out of his mouth god took his sanity god took his sanity and placed him in the in the I think in the wilderness or something like that with the donkeys, with the animals for seven years until he understood that that king, that that kingdom is not his, that everything that we have is God's. Everything that God allows us to experience is because of him. So every day when you try to boast up, when you try to, oh, I got this going on, I'm building this, I'm building that, or, oh, I don't want to do this because it's my body, my time, my money. Boy, every day I got to die to my flesh. That ain't easy. That's not easy. <laughs> that is not easy. It's one of the hardest things. Like, this is what I want to do. And God's like, but your life is not your own. I was I was going to go trade some clothes at the flea market. Because I'm like, bro, I'm not going to wear this. Like, let me, I need to get some, some practical clothes. Let me get a jean jacket. Let me let me trade this. I get there and God tells me, give it away. Sir, I need clothes. What do you mean? <laughs> like, but even like little stuff like that, it's like, okay, God, like, thankfully, we've been watering this seed of giving food and clothes away for, for years now. So I'm like, you know what? That's cool. That's fine. But just imagine, you know, like having a plan in mind. Only for God to be like, ha, that's funny. This is the plan. This is the way we're going. And you could either say yes and go that route, just trusting that his is better because of his character. Or you can say no and be like, but this is what I want to do. And when you do that, you're there is only two options. You're either serving God or you're serving Satan. And serving Satan don't mean that you walk around um with with horns on your head and, and and demonic no you can be a good person and still serve the kingdom of darkness it's only two options there is no in between it's either yes to your will and your way or no i'll do it by myself and his grace does not follow that and i have been where god's grace was not with me i will never forget it i went to knoxville just picking just picking up and going i'm just 
my car, my time, da da da. Best friend needs me, let me go. And that's that's the thing too. So many times we try we try to be God in other people's life, and that falls on you because who told you to do that? Then nobody say you do that. But anyway, I go see my best friend. By the end of the trip, somebody stole my car, stole my identity, totaled my car, uh, wrecked my credit. <laughs> Literally, like this was more than a year of damage control off one decision to go see my best friend, like just pick up and go. And so that's why now, like, yeah, I be traveling and moving around, but I promise you that one incident taught me, God, is it okay for me to go? Will your grace be with me if I go? Because if it ain't with me, absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> Again, learn from me. Learn from my mistakes. Your life is not your own. Oh, it, it feels like, oh, I don't, like, I want to make my own decisions. You do, you get, you get free will to make your own decisions. You get free will. <laughs> you can go either way. God is not going to force you to choose his way. You learn to love and you, you learn to trust that God's way is just the best way. Because he that cold, he that far, like, I wasn't even thinking of that, God. That's that's lit. Like, he, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. And so you look at the glass half full that, okay, you told me I couldn't do that, but that must mean that it's something greater. Okay, you told me to change that. It must be for, for, for my good. It must be so that my children can be protected. It must be because you told me not to go there. It must be for some reason. That I don't see, but I have faith because you are a great God. And you will never, like, put me in a situation that is detrimental to me. You love me more than I love myself. In short, <laughs> fall in love. <laughs> fall in love with Jesus. And then all the, the decisions don't get necessarily easier, but you trust him more. And with that trust, it's like, okay. I surrender. I surrender because you got it. You can do it way better than me. You you are a genius. And I'm just a willing vessel. I'm just a willing vessel. Like, I have no clue what I'm doing. If it was up to me. I'd be somewhere unhealthy, broke, uh, living a whole nother life. I'm from Memphis. And let's just say a lot. Like, our city is rough. And, and not everybody make it out. Yeah, I should be strong out. I, I, yeah, too many things. I wouldn't have no village, no friends, no family, no business. I probably would have a business, but it wouldn't be as fulfilling and like prosperous because make no mistakes. Like you can still be very successful and not walk with Christ. I've even seen, I read something where it was like, God allows people to have a quote unquote successful life on earth because once they die, that's the only bit of that's the only bit of pleasure that they will ever experience for eternity. Absolutely not. Ah, hard truth number three is although it's very hard, some days you don't understand. Some days God give you a word and that's all He gives you. Some days you feel isolated. Some days you feel like your good works are not paying off. Some days you feel almost a little arrogant that, okay, well, God, if I can't do that, at least I'm going to go, I'm going to go do this. And then you still got to be like, oh, sorry, Lord, for my heart. Because even if you did nothing else for me, you still have, you have done more than enough. I have a same mind. I have a, a functioning vessel. I have breath. I have a choice to choose eternity with you. Like, Old Testament, they didn't have a choice. Like, they were dying regardless. God was wiping them out. Because y'all are stubborn and evil and wicked. But oh, you sent your son to save me and wash me clean. Where I get to spend, spend eternity with you. Like, yeah. 
Absolutely. Not easy. But it, it, but it gets easier. And even in the heart, it's still so beautiful. God loves me more than anybody that I know. God loves me even on days I don't choose him. God loves me through and through. God had a plan for me before I was even in my mother's womb. That's how intentional and detailed God is. It's like, like choose your heart. <laughs> choose your heart. And I'd rather choose the heart that comes with way more love, way more kindness and compassion and fulfillment. Yeah. I hope y'all choose that too. I hope you choose God. I hope you choose Jesus. And yeah, stand up. Because they both going to be hard. They both, Satan or Jesus. I might be a little biased, but Jesus is the best one. <laughs> I don't know. I want to be on the side that's like undefeated. I don't want to be playing for the team who already lost. <laughs> it's weird. Blame. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, I love y'all. And Jesus loves you so much more. And he wants to have a relationship with you. And I want you to have a relationship with him because it is the greatest one. Um, and we'll be yeah. posting things about my birthday. So stay tuned. I love you. Bye.